Vale. Eh, ¿Lo vas a hacer en castellano, perdón, o en inglés? ¿Es ok hablar en español o en inglés? Ah, okay. <laughs> in English. Uh, uh, in, in okay. English. Uh, in English. Uh, in English. Okay. Well, the video is better in English then. Okay. Okay, so well, welcome everybody to, to this uh, new session of the Cine Coffee Talk. Today we have a brand new doctor at Cine, Christian Narvaez, uh, with us, uh, who's going to speak about computational modeling of electrohydrodynamics in microfluidic based uh, manufacturing. As a member of Kratos Multiphysics Group and drop, uh, about droplet uh, dynamics. Thank you, Christian, for your participation. The floor is yours. Okay. Uh, thank you, Alejandro, for this kind introduction. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Christian Narvaez. I am here to present uh, my research that is entitled Computational Modeling of Electrohydrodynamics in Microfluidics Based Manufacturing. The research was doing the frame of my in my PhD thesis, I was under the supervision of Pavel Reshakov and Jordi Pons. So, uh, before to continue, I want to give you an example in order to introduce what is electrodynamics. So, I hope this, the, the example that I will give you is very familiar it's from the high school. So, if we consider that we have a, a water stream that we can see here in this picture, and also we can consider at the same time that you have an electrical charge comb. If we put this comb close to the water stream, this water stream will be blended as we can see here in this picture. So this blended effect is generated by the action of the electrical forces. Um, and also it is induced by the, the polarization of the water molecules and also by the charge from the, from the comb. Another well-known example in the framework of the electrodynamics that actually is one of the benchmark in this, in this topic is the one that we can see here is a suspended droplet in a continuum medium. When this droplet is exposed to electric field, uh, it will be deformed. For example, here we can see some uh, deformation of some convective flows inside the, the droplet in order to deform its interface. So in few words, we can conclude that the electrohydrodynamics is a, is a way to set a liquid in motion by the action of electrical forces. And these electrical driving liquids uh, has employed different applications. And one of them is a bad manufacturing process that actually is one of the most promising techniques in this topic in order to produce a, a future a micro and nanoscale. In the advanced manufacturing system, based on electrodynamics, there are different techniques that can be employed in order to produce some, some structures, and some of them are displayed in this picture. But all this process has in common that they are always looking for a stable flow regimen that is called the Taylor cone. An example of this Taylor cone we can see here in this picture that is the formation of a cone structure at the end of the capillary tube. This cone structure is very important because it shows the balance between the driving forces. Um, and also in the manufacturing process, it is very important to achieve this flow regimen because it means that we would have a, a stable production of such a structures. And also the structure we have, a, we, we will have a homogeneous structure we, when we achieve this flow regimen. And the structure that we can form using these this advanced manufacturing process are displayed here. So we can, it's possible to form some particles, fibers, and also it's possible to print a small feature as the one that we can see here in this picture. And all these structures can be employed in different fields and for different applications. For example, in the energy, it can be used in order to produce sensors. In the environment, also it's used to, to produce membranes for water treatment application. And also the membranes can be employed for tissue engineering. Another example of the structure that can be fabricated using electrohydrodynamics is the one that we can see here in this picture. But, but the, at this experimental level, uh, the main challenge that will appear here is to find the operational parameters in order to set a stable flow regimen to produce this structure. But here I would like to say that the, the experimental process is easy. So, and we can see it is not difficult, it's very versatile, but the problem of this, uh, of, of this branch, of this, of this advanced manufacturing process 
is the physics. So the physics of the electrodynamics is very complex and is enhanced by, is affected by different uh, external parameters and some of them are, are displayed in this list. And for the reason it's very difficult to approach the electrodynamics the with analytical uh, with analytical <laughs> solutions. And in this sense, we employ the physics-based model, specifically the computational fluid dynamics in order to model the physics of the electrodynamics. But in the modeling of the electrodynamics, we also face several challenges. In order to, to show you the challenges, I would like to use the example of the droplet dynamics. Here we can see is a suspended droplet in a continuum medium. And when this drop is exposed to electric field, it undergoes a different a complex deformation. And also in some point it will break up. So the first complexity appears from the nature of the problem at hand that we have. So we are dealing with two different materials. So it means that we have uh, the interface a jump between the material properties. And this mismatch between the material properties is very critical. And actually, it gives the, the driving forces. And, and some of them are displayed here that we can see in this, in this picture. Another complexity emerges from the complex deformation that we face. For example, we have some large deformation of the complex topological changes as well. So it means the, the breakup of the fluid domain at some point. So summarizing all these complexities, uh, we will propose the challenges. So the first challenge in order to model it, the electrodynamics is the correct representation of the fluid fluid interface. And the other challenge is in position of the forces at the fluid fluid interface. But in order to model in the, the, the electrodynamics phenomena and the, to, to, to model the deformation of the droplet that I mentioned before, we employ the mass and the momentum conservation equation and the mass well equation. Okay, for the governing equation for the fluid dynamics, we're supposed to have a Newtonian fluids and they are under in, under isothermal conditions. So the mass and the momentum conservation equation can be reduced to the well-known navier stokes equation. But here it's very important to mention that we introduce the surface tension effect due to the, the size that we are working. So we are working very simply. Right. Um, for this one, it's very important to, to deal with, to, to introduce the surface tension actually is one of the driving forces that we have in this problem. On the other hand, we have the governing equation for the electric phenomenon. In this case, we're supposed to have a, a, a poorly conducting media. So it means that we have the liquid that we are modeling have a finite conductivity and a finite permittivity. That's the electrical properties of the materials. Um, we don't consider the magnetic effects. The magnetic effect since the characteristic time of the magnetic effect is much smaller of the electric one. So for two reason, we it's possible to, to express the electric field as the gradient of the electrical potential. And also at the same time, uh, the charge conservation equation can be reduced to the Laplace equation. We can see here in this, uh, this equation because we consider that the phenomena is, the phenomenon is electrophysic static. And these two physics are coupled by the electric forces that is given by the Maxwell stress tensor that, that, that is expressed by this equation. But here is one of the main challenges that I, I will talk about later, but because the, the electric forces, it can be expressed as the interfacial force or as a body force. So in this point, the main challenges that will appear here for the modeling of the electrodynamics is the representation of the electromechanical coupling. But as I mentioned before, we have some mismatch between the material properties, and this mismatch uh, generates some discontinuous field in the modeling of, the, of this phenomenon. The first one appears from the pressure, and the second one appears from the, the gradient of the electrical potential. And so first we have a weak discontinuity that's given by the gradient of the electrical potential that's given here in this equation. And the, the other two, the, the second discontinuous field, we have a weak and a strong discontinuity for the pressure. The one is given by the mismatch between the, the density, the material properties, the density, and the other one is given by the effect of the, the strong one. The strong discontinuity is given by the effect of the surface tension. Uh, actually, in this moment, in the equation that we can see here is the momentum equation. We are already introduced the electric force and also the, the surface tension effect. 
And the challenge that we appear here is the sharp representation of this discontinuous field in the, in the modeling of the electrohydrodynamics. So, uh, in order to address the first and the second challenge, we propose the one question is how to accurately represent the fluid flow interface in, an, in HDE problems. So, from the literature review, we can see that there are two main methodologies in order to model such a phenomenon. The first one is the Lagrangian, and the second one is the Eulerian methodology. For the first one, it's very efficient for, for modeling a, a liquid with a small deformation. And also, it's very accurate for the imposition of the electrical forces at the interface. But the main problem with the Lagrangian methodology is the remission process and the interface reconstruction that, is, that will be very expensive for large deformation that we expect to have with this phenomenon. For the second methodology that we have, the, the Eulerian one, this is very efficient for large deformation and topological changes. And also, it's accurate for, it is accurate for the imposition of the forces at the interface. But we need a very refined measure in the vicinity of the interface in order to have a accurate representation of such a forces at the interface. But if we consider that the problem I have that we have for the electrodynamics effect, we expect to have so large deformation and also so the at some point the liquid domain will break up. So uh, we will use to simulate a Eulerian-based methods in order to, to simulate because it will be more efficient for the problem that that we're trying to approach. In the framework of the Eulerian based method, there are different techniques in order to simulate the, the fluid flow interface. Some of them are the level set method, the volume of fluid, and the phase field. These techniques need uh, additional know and equation in order to capture the evolution of the, of the fluid, fluid interface. But the main difficulty with these techniques is the, the position of the interfacial forces. As I mentioned before, and with the problem that we are trying to simulate, we have the surface tension and the electric forces that, that are acting at the, at the interface. In the literature review, we can see that for modeling, the, so to tackle this difficulty, we can use the continuous surface approach in order to, to express these, these interfacial forces uh, to express as a volumetric force. So it means that the, the surface tension will be smoothing a few computational cells in order to, uh, to give the continuity between the two medias. So another approach that can be devised from the literature review is based on the finite dynamic methods. One of them is the general, generalized or extended finite element that use another enrichment. And the second one is the enriched finite element that use a local enrichment. But the second question that we propose in order to, to address the challenges three and four is how to accurately represent the electromechanical coupling. So in the literature review, we check that there are two main methodologies. The first one is the sharp interface, and the second one is the smear interface. So for the sharp interface, uh, with this approach, we cast the forces as interfacial one. Um, in this, uh, in the sharp interface, uh, we represent the jump between the material properties. So we represent the discontinuity between these two materials. Um, for the reason, there are no well-established numerical methods. Only few numerical studies employ this, uh, this approach because it's quite difficult and needs a special things in order to represent the to represent the the jump between the material properties. But on the other hand, we have this mirror interface approach that with this approach, we cast the forces as a volumetric, uh, as a volumetric one. And um, there are well-established conventional numerical methods. And most of the studies from the literature review employ this, this approach in order to model the, the ESD problem. But maybe you are wondering what will be the difference between cast the, the forces as interfacial or as a volumetric. So here I would like to, to show you uh, an example. So is a, this example is from the droplet dynamics. So the, the droplet under electric force, uh, we, we can check here for the volumetric force. We need a very fine measure, uh, very fine measure in order to have a small error. But for the interfacial force, we can employ a cost measure and we can get a lower error than the volumetric one. So 
In this sense, the sharp interface approach is shown to be more efficient for the problem at hand that we have. In the examples that we did, so we implemented uh, the two methodologies. So we we cast the, the, the interfacial forces as a volumetric force, and this implementation was did the, uh, was made in open form. So we employed for this first approach the smearing interface. So here we can see the the, uh, the numerical domain. So we lever we leverage the that the physics of the problem, the electrodynamics, is symmetric. So we employ an asymmetric numerical domain, and with the, the um, and with the implementation that we did in open fun, we we possible to simulate some flow regimens, as we can see here in this uh, in this picture. But the problem with this numerical approach is that it's very expensive and it's very computational cost. Uh, it's very computational cost. So, for example, here we can see the characteristic grid side is almost 100. So we need a very fine mesh, very, very small elements uh, there at the interface in order to catch the physics of the problem at hand. For this reason, it's very, it's very, very expensive. Um, it would, it, we try to use this computational method for simulate a full 3D numerical simulation will be very, very expensive. So for this reason, we employ the Axisymmetric one. In the other hand, we uh, we cast the the electrical forces as interfacial one, and we employ the enriched finite element with the level C te uh, a technique. In uh, 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 this this approach was implemented in Kratos Multiphysics in the branch of droplet dynamics. So here we can see an example how we how is the, the implementation that uh, the schematic representation of the discontinuities that we have. So we try to represent the first discontinuity for the enrich, enriching the, the solution of the finite element in order to catch the discontinuity in the, in the electrical potential. And the other one, we represent the weak and the strong discontinuity in the pressure field. So for the weak discontinuity in the electrical potential, we employ only one degree of freedom. Um, and we enrich the finite element space using the hat function that we can see here. This hat function was introduced in the framework of the XFEM. And uh, it was the first time that we that it was developed for the enriched finite elements that we did. And um, for the second uh, discontinuous field uh, for the pressure field, we employed the formulation proposed by Hashemi 2020. And the uh, and all these degree, the extra degrees of freedom that we add in order to catch the, the discontinuity that characterize electrodynamics is uh, it can be condensed because the, these additional degrees of freedom are local, so we can condense them at the local level. We can per perform the static condensation. Uh, with this uh, static condensation, it is very po it's possible to. Sorry. It's possible to perform some uh, full 3D numerical simulation. Uh, so, uh, we can see here, for example, the deformation of the droplet and the electrofield. Uh, here we have another example. So, for this example, uh, we locate the, the droplet at the center of the domain. Uh, for, this, for the other example, we move, we displace the, the center of the droplet close to the, the world of the domain in order to induce an, an, an asymmetric deformation. So it is possible to, to do with the full 3D numerical simulation. If we try to simulate the same example with the first approach, with the smearing interface approach implemented in open form, it will be possible, but it will be very expensive at the same time. So using the, the numerical approach that like we propose in rich final element, we can do it. Um, it is still expensive, but we can deal with this with the computational cost. Another approach that we are sorry. another example that we are uh, working now is the we are trying to simulate the uh, ESD lithography in order to bring a, to to form a high resolution printing for sensors or maybe for for biomedical applications. So here is a numerical domain that we try to, to analyze it. Um, when we simulate, it was possible to, to predict. So the, the formation of the special flow partners, 
for example, here we can see the formation of droplets, and also uh, it's possible to induce the Riley Taylor instability using the electrical forces. Um, well, the simulation that we did is uh, we validated with some scaling laws so for the literature, and it's, uh, it followed the, the physics. So uh, and it, was, it was possible to propose the, this relationship in order to estimate the onset voltage that we need for say these flow regimens. Another example that we are working uh, with different in collaboration with other universities is the one that, that, I will, that I would like to show you here is a practical application that due to the increased consumption in the air transportation, we propose to, to develop a new material with a coating nano electrospun nanofibers. The, 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 uh, we estimate using the, the numerical modeling, the operating parameters using the CFD in order to, to, to form the fibers. Um, and also, it, it can use it to reduce the time in the fabrication process. So we can estimate more quickly the operating parameters and simulate uh, the, the, the such a parameters and check the, the formation of the fibers that we will have. And with this material that we did in collaboration with some new universities, it was possible to, to increase the fracture strain up to 20% and also to reduce the roughness of the, ma of the materials uh, up to 56%. So for this, uh, this, this material that we are proposing with the coating nanofibers, it can be employed for the aerospace industry in order to decrease the, the weight and also the, the performance of the materials. Another example that we, are, um, that we are, that I would like to show you this is, is a practical application regarding to the people without access to safe drinking water. Maybe here in Europe or North America is not a big problem, but where I come from, uh, from Ecuador, is a big deal. So most of the, more than the 30% of the population doesn't have access to a safe drinking water. So we propose to create a electrospool membrane in order to Purify the, the water and have some, and also to decrease the, the contaminants in the water. So once again, we employ the CFD, the numerical simulation that we perform, in order to establish the parameters for the fabrication of these membranes. Um, we, uh, with the first test that we did with the with the membrane that, that we can fabricate, uh, the reduction of the heavy metals was decreased up to 80 uh, percent. In the frame of, of the chromo and cadmium, so it would be possible to decrease it up to up to the 20%, as mentioned before. And this project is continuing. Maybe in the future we will perform some tests, some more tests in order to expand the the capabilities of these of these membranes and establish a, a more contaminants that we can the, we can filter such a contaminant. So the, for the conclusion and the main observation that we have from the, the, the computational modeling of the electrodynamics, uh, both, uh, I mean, either the volumetric or interfacial forces can provide an accurate prediction for the formation of AC flow regimens, but these two methodologies that we propose can be used for a test bed for any manufacturing process in, in the framework of the electrodynamics and it'd be very, very valuable for predicting the formation of such a, a flow regimen. But if we try to, to deal only with the, the, the fabrication of, fab, of, the, of the fibers of the particles where we can uh, leverage the symmetry of the physics, so we will propose to only to employ the SMER interface approach because it is a faster approach that we can do it. So, but in the other hand, if we are interested in simulating the full physics of the of the electrodynamics in order to understand the rich physics that is going down, going going the in the, at the interface, we will propose to use the sharp interface approach uh, in order to deal with the complex of the physics I mentioned before. So what I try to say is uh, don't keep 
don't use cannon to kill a mosquito because the the electrodynamics uh, simulating with the enriched finite elements it will be too powerful only to simulate a, a small uh, only for tuning the the parameters for for establishing the flow regime. And thank you for your attention. This and this research was doing with the with the support of the, with this following project. So if you have some question, I am more happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. As Christian said, if there is any question in the chat or in the room, please go ahead. Yeah, so this this approach where you assume that well, the axis symmetry, how useful is it in practice? Because the instabilities that you get, many of them will not be with that stuff, with that symmetry, right? Exactly. Yeah. They, Okay, so the first approach is very useful until this point, because until this point the, we can catch the, the symmetry. So at uh, this point, the electrodynamics is the physics is symmetric. After that, uh, we can have some right internal instabilities in the jet and also some whipping effects for the, the, the elasticity of the liquid. So until this point is very useful to 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 use the first approach, the volumetric uh, force. And just another question. Uh, when you say that the magnetic uh, time scale is very small, uh, can you explain that? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so the, the fluid when it moves is creating a magnetic field. Uh, it will create, but the problem is that we the, the so the magnetic is much faster than the electric time. So we can don't see the magnetic effect in this problem. If we try to deal with the magnetic effect, uh, it will be different than zero. So we can some rotation on it. So the electric field will be rotation. And here is linear in the electric field. So it's some scales that are proposing the literature in order to, to deal with these effects. Well, then, if there are no no more questions, thank you, Christian, again. Ah, well, we have one comment, sorry. Yes. Uh, I'm reading it to you. Uh, nice work. Could you please explain the source of this continuous electric field? Drops are water and intensity of surface tension is held fixed or it changes with the electric field intensity? The you can open the chat if you prefer to read it. It's a... Uh, okay, you can open the chat. Where is the chat? Thank you, Luis. Could you please explain the source of the discontinuous electric film applied the film is drops are are what drops are what the intensity of the surface tension is fixed in the children. Yes, actually the the, the electric the the surface tension will be affected by the electric field, but we don't consider this effect. Yeah, only we consider that the electric field set in motion by the electric force. No, we don't deal with the with with the effects of the electric field in the surface tension. We consider a a constant surface tension. I think this is the the question that I try to. So, yes, so we fix the it is this. we fix the surface tension is a constant. 
uh, I think there is another one. Yes, written above them. Okay. Okay, that's just uh, 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 a complete uh, message. Okay, it, but it, is this this continuous vector field? Is that only one question? Because I don't understand. So, what's the sort of this continuous vector field? Yeah, uh, the electric field is discontinuous. The electric field is discontinuous by the degrading of the electrical potential. Is a discontinuity that we do. But the surface tension is so. Uh, the, the surface tension is constant and only acts at the, at the surface, at the interface of the between the two points. And I think it's all from the chat as well. Thank you. Any other question? Any other question? Alejandro, we don't have any question more. Okay, so then, uh, well, uh, Mr. Villalwin is also satisfied for your answer. So maybe we can we can close the session and and stop the recording. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, Alejandro. And see you in the next coffee talk. I think it's on Friday. Well, you'll get the the notice. Thank you. Okay, Everybody. thank you. Thank you. Se logra impulsar el acuerdo. No, no, se crea discontinu la discontinuidad porque tú tienes dos materiales diferentes aquí. Uh -huh. Pero ¿qué es lo que queda, Campo? ¿Es, ¿Es una fuerza externa? O es una... Ajá, te crea esta fuerza. O sea, por la dis... A ver. ¿Dónde están las ecuaciones? Está ah, por la permitividad. O el... Ajá, aquí. ¿Cómo se llama? Tú tienes la permitividad. Ah, la, permitividad. la permitividad es, cambia. es, es cambia. Entonces aquí te genera el salto. Tienes un campo eléctrico externo, pero... La, la fuerza que, que se da en el material depende de esta permitividad. De esta permitividad y de la conductividad. O sea, el, la, digamos que o sea, es continuo, pero débilmente aquí te da una discontinuidad. Y cuando tú calculas el campo eléctrico, te da el salto. Ahí. Claro. Y cuando se multiplica aparte por la permitividad, te da la fuerza de la vida. Sí, sí, más es que sí. Maxwell, las huellas de Maxwell, es muy bien. Gracias. Gracias, Luis. Thank you.